Hi, this is uh, Mahesh, Mahesh Morjaria. Until very recently, I was with uh, First Solar. Um, I was VP of Systems Development at First Solar. My topic today is uh, is grid scale DC DC couple TV and energy storage plant, also called hybrid plant. Really a good idea. I'd like to leave you with uh, three major thoughts in my talk. One, uh, PV solar energy and battery energy costs have declined rapidly. This opens up an opportunity to create valuable fully dispatchable hybrid plants by combining PV and storage. Third, while DC couple storage topology is uh, touted a great deal and is indeed efficient, it is not cost effective for large scale PVS hybrid plants. A typical PV plant output uh, is uh, illustrated here. It is not dispatchable. Uh, what's shown here is an interconnection limit uh, in this case uh, for megawatt. One way of making this plant dispatchable is to build a hybrid plant where we increase the PV array size beyond the interconnection limit. We store access energy. This is the energy that's access uh, over the interconnection limit in the energy storage system within the plant itself. This is kind of illustrated here, where the access energy is used to charge the storage system during the daytime, and in the evening, it is used to discharge um, as required. ESS, energy storage system, then provides the flexibility to generate desired profile and even manage uh, grid services like uh, frequency regulation uh, and other regulation services as well. Hybrid plants like this benefit from having shared infrastructure cost, uh, the interconnection itself, uh, the development of the project, and ongoing o and well. This is certainly a game changer. We can get a clean energy plant that is dispatchable and yet more cost effective than conventional generation. In this chart, uh, I'm going to show how we used uh, such a plant to provide, uh, provide the utility with a particular capacity that they were looking in the evening time frame. So what you are seeing here uh, in this chart is uh, uh, the months of the year and uh, the hours of the day. And the utility was looking for full capacity in this target period shown by the box. Now, if it was just a PV plant, it would at most provide 25% firm capacity during this uh, target period shown in this case. However, if we added one hour of storage, we can increase the target uh, capacity factor to 48%. This is achieved by shifting certain amount of energy from the daytime to the evening time as kind of illustrated here. We can increase that even further by using two hours of storage, which will produce 72% form capacity and then finally, if we add four hours of storage, it will pretty much get up to 98% form capacity during this target period uh, that is required by the utility. This is also a game changer approach because now we can produce a clean energy plant that, that provides the capacity necessary, but at a less cost than new conventional generation. You may have heard about this particular project where APS, the, the, the Arizona Public Service, is going to install a 50 megawatt, 135 megawatt hours of solar shifting battery in order to satisfy that particular evening uh, peak period. And this solution was the most cost effective of all the others that were proposed for that site. A number of uh, design 
factors have to be considered in uh, a PV and storage hybrid plant. One is the capacity of PV plant in terms of uh, megawatt AC, uh, as well as megawatt DC, this is the size of the panel, uh, versus the battery storage size in both uh, in terms of power, megawatt AC, as well as megawatt hours. Uh, another consideration is whether the design requires AC or DC coupled uh, solution. And uh, we'll talk more about it later in this uh, session. Battery degradation modeling uh, plays an important role as well uh, in designing a successful PV and storage hybrid plant. Uh, safety is another factor, uh, whether we use uh, uh, buildings uh, for housing the storage system or using containerized uh, enclosures, um, et cetera, play an important role as well. Next, uh, we'll talk about AC and versus DC coupled architecture. Uh, in case of AC coupled architecture, uh, the PV panels are uh, traditionally connected to the inverter and the output of the inverter, which is in the form of AC power, uh, is stepped up by the transformer and feeds into the grid. Uh, in this case, uh, we in, uh, add a battery storage system where the battery is uh, um, connected to an inverter, which converts it from DC power to AC power and stepped up by the transformer and uh, feed uh, into the grid uh, through the AC line as well. So this is perhaps the simplest architecture uh, for connecting storage. Uh, another approach is to use the same uh, approach as uh, for the PV. However, uh, instead of connecting the output of the storage to the uh, AC side of the transformer, um, we are connecting it directly into the DC bus uh, coming from the PV panels through a converter, which is shown uh, on the top left. And the, the, the key advantage of a DC coupled system uh, is, uh, first of all, instead of two transformers, you have one transformer. Uh, and in case of uh, AC coupled, you have one PV inverter and one storage inverter. Whereas uh, in the DC couple, we simply have one PV inverter and one DC-DC converter. Um, there are higher losses uh, in the case of AC couple system, especially for the PV electricity that is uh, first transformed into AC. And then from, from the AC connection, it is transformed back into DC to fit into the storage system. And then uh, that process is reversed when you want to feed the electricity to the grid. So there are higher losses because you have two additional conver conversion uh, from DC to AC, etc. And this has an impact of about, uh, about 3% uh, on overall uh, amount of energy that is fed from the storage system. Um, so DC couple system is indeed more efficient. However, when you look at the, the challenges associated with DC coupled storage uh, in a PV plant, um, you, you, uh, you may realize that it is uh, not as simple. So what you are see, uh, seeing right now is uh, a very large uh, plant that was built uh, by First Solar in 2014 timeframe. Uh, this is a 550 megawatt California uh, Topaz plant in California. And uh, the, the, the white dot that you see uh, in this picture uh, are, is, a, is a power conversion station where we have the inverter as well as a transformer. So if we have a DC coupled solution, we would have to, to put storage on each and every one of those power conversion stations. Uh, and uh, that could be uh, pretty um, difficult uh, especially given such a large site. I mean, just look at the size of this plant, which is about five miles across. So if you had to do uh, operation and maintenance on this plant, 
uh, you had to pretty much, especially if you had to do O&M on the battery storage system, you will have to drive from, uh, drive to each and every battery location, uh, battery storage system location around the plant. And, and that can become, uh, become quite uh, costly. On the other hand, uh, centralizing storage uh, has a significant benefit. So uh, here's an actual layout of the plant uh, for solar is planning to build. Uh, on the, the bottom and the top are the, the layout of the PV arrays. Uh, on the top left is the substation where all the AC electricity from the plant is, uh, uh, is collected and uh, fed into the grid. And so if you were to look at the footprint of the storage system, which is uh, shown uh, next, uh, it's a very small footprint and we can have a, a one building which houses all the storage required for the plant uh, in that uh, location. This uh, greatly simplifies all the conductors that uh, we have to bring from the storage plant to the substation uh, as opposed to what has to be done from. Uh, distributed storage. So this kind of illustrates uh, why um, centralized storage and uh, enhanced AC coupled uh, plant is uh, somewhat preferred. Next we'll uh, discuss some of the pros and cons on AC versus uh, DC coupled, especially for utility scale plants. The first thing is that by centralizing storage, uh, it does lower cost. Uh, both CapEx and o and uh, However, on the DC coupled side, some capital cost reduction is uh, possible due to sharing of inverter components. Um, whereas on the AC coupled side, we are certainly duplicating some of the inverters and transformers as shown before. The other aspect is that commercial availability of storage converter system is uh, much better than dual port inverters, which can deal with both uh, PV as well as um, um, the storage part. And uh, for, so especially for the utility scale uh, price points. One of the advantages of having PV and storage uh, in the AC coupled system is that it allows us to uh, contract that in a much easier manner in the terms of the technology itself and what the investors uh, consider in terms of the risk associated with each one of those technologies. Um, simplicity of control and site design, that is something that is much better with AC coupled system. Uh, we can, uh, there is ability to dispatch both PV and storage independently. Um, however, on the other side, there is reduced efficiency due to more passes through inverters and transformers that we mentioned before as well. Whereas on the DC couple side, there is increased efficiency due to fuel conversion. And the other aspect that's quite important is the ability to capture clip DC energy. This is energy from the PV plant, uh, which when exceeds um, the inverter limit uh, is basically clipped in the case of uh, AC coupled system. And finally, uh, on, the, on the DC couple side, it does require distributed storage throughout the large plant, which makes it very complex. And even other complexities include how we manage the maximum power point tracking of PV uh, and the state of charge of the battery uh, gets uh, quite uh, involved and a uh, lot more work has to be done in that area as well. Um, one other consideration is how to prevent backfeeding into PV panels and address DC voltage issues. So in general, AC coupled plants are generally preferred uh, especially for utility scale plants and uh, turn out to be more cost effective. So with that, I'm going to uh, come back to the summary that I presented before. Uh, PV solar energy and battery energy costs have declined rapidly. This does uh, open up the opportunities to use PV and storage hybrid plants 
as a more cost-effective, fully dispatchable plant. Uh, however, AC coupled storage topology is uh, preferred for large-scale PVS hybrid plants. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, participating in this uh, panel session. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop me an email uh, or we can answer them during this panel session. Thank you very much and have a good day.